What do these two things have in common? Let's jump right into it. Hey everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room. The third clue for you is this. That's right, today we're gonna jump right in and move ahead and get the optical switches installed, configured, connected, coded, so our scoop, the VUC behind a ramp right here, will be able to catch the ball and fire it right back out, similar to an auto fire uh, coil. For right now, that's all we, all we need, just to get the ball to kick right back out. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, what are these things? This is one of the IR transceivers. It can receive or send the signal that I got off Pinball Live. For like four bucks a pop, you can get a bunch of these. This is a terminal that we're gonna use to go through and expand and connect our power and our grounds from the, just the basic ones that came from our power filter board and our nano board. And this is the fast 12 volt constant current opto emitter driver board thinger. I think I got that right. The important part here though is the 12 volt. So we need to change your power wires a little bit from how I have them set up because we don't have any 12 volt coming out anywhere. Ugh, let me explain. Inside our beautiful cabinet, we have our power supplies, high voltage, switching low voltage. We have our power driver, power filter board, right? That has the three large capacitors. It has power coming in from our power supplies. And then it has power going out to our nano board. And if you looked at my earlier pictures, which I'll throw one up on the screen right now, this is how I said the wiring should be. It shows grounds, 5 volt, 12 volt, and high voltage all coming out. Two of the grounds and the two of the high voltage that are associated are going straight to the play field. We got that part right. But then we had a yellow line that was for our 12 volt power, and it's coming out of the power filter board into our nano board. Now that is correct. We need 12 volts running to this board to be able to power it. And the nano board then has 5 volts also coming in, and it has um, connections for 5 volt to come out to power LEDs and things like that. But it doesn't have a 12 volt out. And so the way I had it wired before, we had 12 volt coming from the switching supply to the power filter board, and it just dead ended right there in the nano board because there's no more 12 volt coming out. So what we need to do is between the power filter board and the nano board, instead of having the power wire running um, straight from the power filter board into the nano board, we need to have it run to, a, to the terminal where we can split it and then have some going to the play field, to those little boards like I just showed you for the, um, for the opto controller, and then also coming back to this board as well. But not just going straight here and dead ending because then there's no 12 volt for us to tap into. And we need 12 volt to be able to run our opto switches. Okay, hope that made sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and I've taken out the 12 volt line already. There's no yellow line here anymore. We're gonna throw down a terminal. All right, so we're gonna put that terminal block right down there, I think for now. We could go through and run it like into the play field and branch it off and have it come back. But then we've got an extra wire having to come back off of the play field down to here. I'm really trying to limit and only have go to the play field exactly what really needs to go to the play field. And everything else I want to kind of keep contained in the cabinet. So taking the play field in and out is going to be as few disconnects and reconnects as possible. So for now, this is the approach I'm going to take. We're going to have power coming from the power filter board down to the terminal block and then back up to the nano board. And also from the terminal block out to the play field where it needs to go. And that's going to allow it to go back into the standard connection we already have for the play field. There's room in here for me to send 12 volt on through and there will be golden, no extra connections. This scoop mac already comes from Pinball Life with the optical switches inside here, the, um, the emitter and the receiver. But, so we've got to go through and do is put some flux on this and solder up on each side and get those connected in the right spots.
I wanna take just a minute here and kind of explain the very beginning of my video. So the very beginning, I showed this one black plastic infrared diode in my hand, and then you see me stamping all on top of my video saying, no, those are the wrong ones, buy these ones instead. So that's because Pinball Life, which is where I source the majority of my parts, they have two different options for optical emitters and receivers. One, like you see here in this picture, come in a pair. They're actually a little bit cheaper than the other one. It's six US dollars for the pair. The white plastic housing one is the emitter that sends the light, and the black one is the one that receives the, the light, and then whenever something breaks out beam, it tr tr triggers it as a switch, right? These work great, they're tried and true, they're gonna work perfect with your fast hardware controller. The other one I have in my hand is a different one that Pinball Live sells, and it's supposed to be able to be either an emitter or a receiver, and I'm sure they work great. And I actually have a bunch of them left over from my Stern um, Star Trek, the SAM system, and they work great in there. I've replaced them and they work great, but they do not work with the fast hardware controller set. I tried exhaustively, got help from a bunch of other people, and they just, the way they are, if they have a slightly different power modulation or something, they, they do not work with a fast hardware controller with this little board here we have, right? So do not get those. Instead, get the pair. You'll see here it's actually a little bit cheaper. Now let's walk through exactly how you wire these up. So you'll see here the white one on this back left side where it says anode versus cathode. You see kind of a green line coming down. That needs to get wired and come right down to this little fast board on that pin on that left-hand side. And then the cathode comes down the other side. Again, this little board here from FAST is what controls the amount of power sent out to your emitter. This will make sure it doesn't get burnt out, okay? So you wanna have that one going here. The other one in black, it has what it shows you on the left side, the orange, is this going straight back to our 16, 16 board, as it shows, as one of the switches. So it's gonna be a switch input on that little um, receptacle we have for all the switch pins. And then purple, this other leg over here, is what's gonna act as the ground and run back in and be connected to the 1616 switch ground, just like all the rest of your switches and those grounds will all be tied in together. Okay, I hope that makes sense and explains a little bit what I had going on and why I was saying that one works, the other one doesn't work. All right, let's continue and we'll get back to the wiring. I just mounted that board right in here. And we've got the power going to it. First, J1 is the switch for in front of my, my stairs. J2 is the switch for the scoop. The other side of these, I've got a yellow wire. That'll be my switch. Okay, that'll come into here, into this thing, and get plugged into the I.O. board. And then this will be my ground. Ran out of black wires, so we're switching to white. So white and black is ground for this first round. Make sure you have enough wire on hand. Now for the other opt over here, um, these ones I soldered directly onto the scoop, okay? And honestly, what I'd really prefer to do is have all of them end with their little white plastic connection, right? Instead of cutting them off. And then use the little jumpers. I'll put a picture one on the screen. It's kind of like a, like a Z with really long legs. They're just male to male um, um, connectors that allows you to connect to these female ends. And that way we can have a permanent wire that's going to our IO board come out, end in one of these female connections and get connected through that, uh, through that male adapter, male to male adapter onto this. And that's because buying these, if you need to replace it, if it burns out, instead of having to redo all of our wires, we just unscrew it, unconnect it, put it in a new one, plug it back in and we'll be all set. So that's the way I would really recommend that you do it. So we all plan on doing it in like my final wiring. But for right now, I'm just gonna, this one reach, I'm gonna wire straight into my 16 um, IO board as a switch input and the ground. And if something happens, I'll have to pull it out and back out that pin from the, um, from the clip, et cetera, from the, from the housing, from the receptacle. Um, so it's, yeah, that's what we're doing for right now. But long term, we'll have those little connectors so we can just easily swap it out and replace a little um, a little emitter diode if we need to, okay? All right, there you go. We got our buck working. It's an auto fire coils that we have set up with that optical switch. And really they weren't that much crazier than a regular switch, right? We have that little current control board we need to plug them into to make sure the right voltage. 
We need to worry about the anode and the cathode legs, make sure those are wired properly as well. But other than that, the config and everything else is just like any other switch and not too crazy, okay? So now it's gonna spit the ball out every time it goes in so we can play test and not have it get stuck down in there. To really do play testing though, we've gotta get um, power hooked up for the rest of the drop targets, the drop bank. There's some more opto switches we need to put in, a switch that will um, operate this control gate back here for our diverter. So we'll tackle all that in our next video and then we will do some real play testing and see how we're feeling about things. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't started your own pinball machine, your own homebrew, why not get on it? There's such a great community out here that's helping me out, they'll help you out. You can do this. Okay guys, we'll catch you next time, bye-bye.